This is how to take vital signs. I will begin by checking my patient's temperature. I'm putting my side rail down. I'm taking the probe of my thermometer and placing a sheath on it. Then I'm going to ask my patient to open their mouth and I'm going to place the probe under the tongue as far back to the molars as it will go and ask them to hold it. And then I will wait for my result. Thank you very much. And dispose of the sheet. Now I will check my patient's pulse. I want to find the radial artery. Put my fingers on the pulse and my thumb behind. I want to check my pulse for 30 seconds. I can multiply that times two for a minute. If my pulse is at all irregular, I will check it for a minute, or I will listen for the apical heart rate. I must have a watch with a second hand, or a watch that counts in seconds to do this. I counted for 30 seconds and I got 40 beats, so I will double that and their pulse or heart rate is 80 beats per minute. Now I'm going to check my patient's respiratory rate. Um, to do this, I want to count the respirations for 30 seconds, multiply times two. A respiration is a full respiratory cycle, um, inspiration and expiration. While I'm doing this, I'm careful not to stare at their chest to make them feel self-conscious or uncomfortable. I counted 10 respirations in 30 seconds and I will multiply that times two and my patient's respiratory rate is 20. Now I will take a pulse oximetry reading on my patient. This is my pulse oximetry probe. It has a finger on the top of it and the red light is also on this side. This is the side that goes where the fingernail is. I place the probe over my patient's, patient's finger. I want to make sure that there is no nail polish on the nail. I will check my pulse oximetry reading, which is 97. Pain assessment is part of vital signs. I will ask my patient, are you having pain today? Oh, yes, you are having pain today. I'm going to ask you on a scale of zero to 10, with zero being no pain and 10 being the worst pain that you've ever had in your whole life, what is your pain level? It's a five? Where are you having your pain? Oh, it's in your head? What kind of pain is it? Is it Okay, it's throbbing. Is it on one side, on both sides? Oh, I see, it's in your forehead, on, just on the right side. I'm gonna go and check your orders and see if I can give you something for pain or see if you have something ordered for pain that will help with that. Maybe I could also dim the lights and um, pull the curtain and see if you can rest. This is how to take a blood pressure on a patient. I'm going to begin by pointing out um, some necessary information on the um, blood pressure cuff and equipment. I will begin with the dial. The dial has a needle. When you pump the blood pressure up and the needle goes up and then you release the valve and the needle is coming down, you may see the needle bob. That movement is not the blood pressure. The blood pressure is what you hear with your stethoscope. This is the part of the blood pressure cuff that will pump the air into the cuff. You can do that by pumping. This is the valve that allows the air to enter and exit the blood pressure cuff or the bladder of the um, blood pressure cuff. It is very, very important that when you tighten this valve before you start your blood pressure that you do not tighten it too tight that you just twist it to the point that you just feel it and then you can go ahead and inflate and pump your cuff. 
When it is time to release your valve, very gently and ever so slowly, release your valve so that the needle on the dial is coming down slowly and consistently all the way to the bottom. You do not want to do this too quickly as you will not get an accurate blood pressure reading. Now I will take my blood pressure. I will begin by placing the cuff on my patient's arm. I want to make sure that I have the right size cuff for my patient. It attaches by Velcro. On your blood pressure cuff, there is an artery marker. I'm going to line that up with my patient's brachial artery. The brachial artery is in the inner aspect. I want to place the cuff approximately two fingers above the antecubital space and not over clothing. I want my patient to rest their arm in a position of comfort. Once I have my patient's cuff on, I want to close the valve. I want to palpate the brachial pulse. I am going to inflate air into my cuff and I will stop when I do not feel the pulse any longer. I don't feel the pulse at the 80. I will release the valve and release the air from my cuff. Now I know that when I take my patient's blood pressure, I will add 30 to this number so that I will pump my blood pressure cuff to 110. And then I will check my blood pressure or release the valve at 110 on the dial. I want to place my stethoscope over my brachial pulse. I will close the valve and I will pump my blood pressure cuff to 110. At 110, I will slowly and consistently release the valve, watching the needle and listening for the sounds of my blood pressure. I will slowly release the valve all the way to the end. Then I will remove the cuff from my patient. The first sound that I heard was the systolic reading and I heard that at 106. The last sound that I heard was the diastolic reading and I heard that at 62. 106 over 62 is my patient's blood pressure reading.